Good morning, alien enthusiasts, and welcome to another Angry Alien Bulletin. It's been a little while, a week or so, since I have given you folks an update on 3i Atlas. Yes, I did do that question and answer live stream, but it has been a little time. Again, really, I don't see why I should be releasing videos on such a regular basis on any topic, but the thing of it is, I have to, because 3i Atlas keeps throwing us new curves virtually on a daily basis if not on a weekly basis anyway so once again we have a new development with this astonishing interstellar object something that is very difficult to explain if it's not being caused by some sort of artificial means for a substantial amount of time now, we of course have been watching the so-called anti-tail or the anti-solar jets that have been emitted from this strange object. Things that have been defying the solar wind in spite of the fact that they shouldn't be able to. We have never seen a comet. I don't care what anybody tells you. I have really done the research on this. There has been no natural comet that has been capable of emitting these massive half million to one million kilometer long anti-solar jets day after day, week after week. No other natural object has ever been able to do this. And the reasons for this are quite obvious. At the distance that 3i Atlas is from the sun, less than two astronomical units, the solar wind is still an extremely powerful gale. If it were not for our magnetic field, it would cook all life on the surface of our planet. Very little would be able to survive the radioactive bombardment that the surface of our planet would be subjected to if we didn't have a magnetic field protecting us. That being the case, then, it is an astonishing development that we have these anti-solar jets pointed at the sun as opposed to a cometary tail. By the way, 3i Atlas appears to have this as well, two tails actually, a dust tail and an ion tail pointed away from the sun that's natural but anything pointing at the sun that survives longer than a few hundred or perhaps at most a couple thousand kilometers that is the most that we have ever seen an anti-solar jet survive under normal circumstances and by the way that's really really rare when that happens but even so the notion that natural sublimation or any other sort of natural process could create these jets that are capable of blasting out towards the sun against the solar wind for a distance of up to a half million to a million kilometers and not get obliterated by the solar wind is an extremely astonishing development. Something, of course, I've been talking about a lot on this channel, but now we have a new development, something about the these anti-solar jets that, frankly, shouldn't be happening. So one of the strangest things about 3i Atlas's so-called anti-tail is the fact that the rotation of 3i Atlas's nucleus does not seem to be having any effect on the anti-tail itself, which, if it is a natural object, doesn't make a great deal of sense. There should be a period of time when whatever area of the object is sublimating all the dust and gas, if that's what the anti-tail is made out of, rotates away from the sun and so therefore is not sublimating the necessary material to create the anti-tail. So there must be an interruption or sort of a periodic pulsing of the anti-tail that should be very obvious when it's under observation and yet we haven't seen any evidence of that but a new paper now reports the detection of what's called a periodic wobble in the anti-tail jet so now we have seen evidence of the rotation having a small effect on it but a very small effect indeed because the jet base appears to be offset by less than eight degrees 
from the poles associated with the rotation axis of the nucleus. So as the nucleus rotates, the jet precesses along a cone surrounding this rotation axis. This suggests that at large distances from the sun, 3i Atlas had a steady day side and a steady night side, which switches roles at perihelion because the rotation axis is nearly aligned with the direction of the sun. If the jet base had a simple natural origin from a pocket of ice, which is sublimated every time it gets exposed to sunlight, the inferred geometry definitely constitutes a new anomaly. Let's explain why this is the case. The new anomaly, as I said, relates to the small probability of the rotation axis of the nucleus of 3i Atlas being aligned to within 8 degrees with the direction of the sun. When the interstellar object approached the sun at a heliocentric distance larger than five times the Earth-Sun separation. So the chance of that alignment occurring randomly is 0 0.005, so less than 1%. If not for that special alignment, the anti-tail jet towards the sun would have been oriented at a much larger angle relative to the rotation axis and would have shown a much larger larger wobble in position angle than the observed value of 8 degrees. With a larger misalignment angle, this would have featured prominent gaps, in other words, the pulsing that should be present in the anti-tail but isn't. It is because of the precise alignment of the anti-tail jet in relation to the rotational poles. What this suggests is, is that the point of origin of 3i Atlas's anti-tail never really went into a dark side as it was approaching the sun because of this orientation towards the poles, much in the same way as the land of the midnight sun doesn't have a sundown close to the poles of our own planet. So this coincidence applies to the geometry of the anti-tail and its rotational angle of 3i Atlas before perihelion. However, this remarkable new revelation after its perihelion on October 29th, 2000, 2025, gleaned from the latest images taken by the Hubble Space Telescope and ground-based telescopes is that 3i Atlas is still showing a prominent anti-tail jet in the direction of the sun. This is despite the fact that 3i Atlas is currently receding away from the sun and its sun-facing side used to be on the night side when 3i Atlas was approaching the sun from July to August of 2025. The base that launched the anti anti-tail jet in July of 2025 is now on the night side of 3i Atlas, and a cometary interpretation of 3i Atlas requires that a new pocket of ice near the opposite pole of the rotational axis that gives rise to a new anti-tail jet must exist after perihelion. In addition, it requires insulation of the previously active jet before perihelion so as for it to become dormant after perihelion constituting yet another anomalous feature. What this means is, is this tiny inclination, this eight degree inclination suggests that there must be a point of origin for the anti-solar jet towards the North Pole, let's call it, that was emitting the anti-tail jet to begin with, again, close to the pole. And then once that particular source passed the sun and went into the dark side, there has to be another source of an anti-tail jet, another point of origin, if you will, at the opposite pole of 3i Atlas. Again, this makes absolutely no sense, but it's unbelievably symmetrical. Since the new anti-tail is observed to be collimated to within 8 degrees out to half a million kilometers in the latest image of 3i Atlas, which was taken on December 15th, the proximity of the new jet base relative to the rotation axis and the sun's new direction raises the 14th anomaly to the second power. In other words, the chance of two major pockets of ice being located near the rotation poles of 3i Atlas. In other words, one pocket of ice at the North Pole and one pocket of ice almost precisely at the same location close to the South Pole so that one of them would be on the day side when 3i Atlas approaches the sun from a great distance and the other is on the day side when 3i Atlas is on its way 
out of the solar system while both being within eight degrees of the nearest rotation pole when facing the sun is the square of 0 0.005 or a tiny probability of merely 0 0.000025. The odds against this happening purely by chance are beyond astronomical to the point to where it's difficult to imagine this sort of thing even occurring. But of course, a technological spacecraft might have a reason for aligning the outflow of gas from its thrusters in the direction of the sun. We of course do not have high resolution images of the jet direction near perihelion because 3i Atlas was hidden from us at that moment. The tight collimation of the anti-tail out to a distance of half a million kilometers, larger than the distance to the moon, despite the solar radiation pressure and wind after perihelion raises new questions. Why does the sunward jet maintain its collimation without being broadened or pushed away from the sun? What is its speed and mass loss rate? Hopefully, upcoming spectroscopic observations of the material it carries will clarify the launch mechanisms of the anti-tail. The derived periodicity of 7.74 hours per rotation in July to August of 2025 could imply a total nucleus rotation period of 15.48 hours if the anti-tail originates from a single active spot at any given time. This value is indeed consistent with the rotation period derived during July of 2025 from the periodic brightness variability of 3i Atlas. For a nucleus radius of two kilometers, assuming that it's that small, with a rotation period of 15.5 hours, the centrifugal acceleration of the surface of 3i Atlas is 0 0.0025 centimeters per second squared. This value is tiny, just 2.6 millionths of the gravitational effect that we feel on the surface of the Earth or 1G. The rotation period needs to be shortened to only 1.5 minutes in order to create an artificial gravity similar to 1G. In case any of you are wondering as to whether or not the rotation of 3i Atlas has something to do with an artificial gravity for its passengers, assuming it has any passengers, it's not rotating nearly fast enough to create that. Now, if it is a much larger object, say with a radius of 10 kilometers instead of two, that definitely makes a difference in terms of its rotational speed and therefore centrifugal force, but still not nearly enough centrifugal force to create a substantial amount of gravity. Then again, if we're talking about Creatures that don't require a great deal of gravity, who knows, maybe that's enough. But regardless, I cannot emphasize the significance of this discovery enough. This recent paper, although the paper doesn't really explain how significant this is, the wobble that has been observed suggests that there has to be a point of origin for the anti-tail both at the North Pole and the South Pole at precisely the same location in order for these amazing phenomena to be observed. Again, every time we see a new behavior from this object, a new anomaly, the odds of it being a natural object become that much more remote. But of course, nobody except Avi Loeb and crazy people like myself are going to point this out. So there you have it. Once again, the 14th anomaly with 3i Atlas. 14 different things about this so-called natural unremarkable comet. So many things that are so obviously natural about this, at least according to NASA and ESA and mainstream astronomers. I just can't understand. I really can't get my head around their arguments, around the position that they take. If they want to believe that this object is somehow natural, sure. 
By all means, believe that, but at least acknowledge just how bizarre all of these anomalies are from the trajectory that is heading towards all of these unlikely but incredibly useful locations. Of course, the hill radius, Jupiter's hill radius, that alone is so bizarrely unlikely and so incredibly useful for an object or a spacecraft, asteroid ship, whatever you want to call it, that would want to distribute, dispatch probes to explore Jupiter. That would be an ideal location for it to head for, and it seems to be heading almost exactly for the hill radius. That alone is unbelievably unlikely, and then combine it with the anti-tail and this symmetry associated with the anti-tail. All of these things piled up together create such an unlikely scenario if we're talking about a natural object, but such an elegantly easy to explain scenario if it's artificial. Not saying again that we're looking at a big spaceship that's somehow hiding in a coma, but instead a modified asteroid, a modified comet, if you will, even something that's been traveling for thousands of light years between the stars, accumulating dust, debris, CO2, whatever, as it travels between the stars, through nebula, through other solar systems, and then as it comes close to a fairly sizable star such as ours, all of that begins to sublimate away and create a coma. That would definitely happen even with an asteroid ship that's been in interstellar space for a very long time. Why then can't we at least explore this possibility, but it's something that 99% of the scientific community utterly refuses to do, and they won't even mention the anomalies that are so obvious, that are indisputable. These things are happening. These things are true. These things can be proven scientifically. There is no reason to omit them from every news story, from every explanation for the layman that NASA or an astronomer or a news agency decides to put out about 3i Atlas, why hide these things? Why omit these so incredibly important and unique characteristics of this amazing object, even if it is natural? I've ranted on and on about this, and I remain so frustrated and annoyed about it. And frankly, I begin to wonder as to whether or not this is somehow conspiratorial, even though I really have a hard time embracing that. I have a hard time believing that thousands and thousands of scientists, astronomers, news agencies, etc. can somehow coalesce into one massive cover-up conspiracy. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I don't see how that could be done. Really, I think it's more ignorance and the insistence to adhere to a given paradigm, a paradigm that these people won't even begin to challenge. And as long as the scientific community continues to adhere to this mindset, the more ignorant we're going to remain. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. This is the way, by the way, that I was able to make recent journeys to Paris and to Sweden to create some spaceflight and alien-type content for you folks. So if you'd like to support trips like that in the future, which, by the way, were supported by you, by the support that you gave me in Australia, I had enough extra funds to make two additional trips. If you'd like to support that sort of thing in the future, Patreon is the best way to go, and all the details are in the description. Thanks again, and until next time, stay angry about space.